जिस वीडियो पे आपने अभी क्लिक किया है इस वीडियो को बनाने में मुझे पूरे छः महीने लगे क्यों लगे कैसे लगे ऐसा क्या है इस वीडियो में खुद ही देख लो एंजॉय इन द ईयर 1917, अ 40 ईयर ओल्ड बंगाली राइटर शरद चंद चट्टोपाध्याय बुक कॉल्ड देवदास वॉज पब्लिश्ड एंड एवर सिंस इट हैज बीन अडेप्टेड अप्रोक्सीमेटली ट्वेंटी टाइम्स इन द फॉर्म ऑफ फिल्म एंड टीवी शोज एंड दी अडेप्टेशन इन द फॉर्म ऑफ प्लेज Or a different story. When I was browsing through old Hindi films, I came across Devdas, released in 1955, starring Dilip Kumar, and got to know about its adaptations. Devdas is adapted in various formats and many languages. There is a 1928 adaptation as a silent film, which is now lost. There are six Bengali adaptations, one Assamese adaptation, two Pakistani Urdu adaptations, one Tamil, two Telugu, one Malayalam, and six Hindi adaptations. And as I had only watched the 2002 Hindi adaptation of Devdas, starring Shah Rukh Khan, Ashwarya Rai, and Madhuri Dixit, I thought of watching all the hindi adaptations and comparing them which i obviously did there are six hindi devdas adaptations and only five of them are interesting among six only four are films and the other two are tv shows hence i didn't include them into this comparison the four hindi devdas films are 1936's devdas starring kl sehgal 1955's devdas starring dilip kumar sujitra sen and vijanti mala 2002's sanjalila bansali's devdas starring shahrukh khan ashwarya rai and madhuri dikshit and 2009's anurag kashyap's dev d starring abhay deol mahi gel and kalki kochlan now because i had already watched the 2002's devdas and didn't got a great impression from 1936's devdas i decided to watch 1955's devdas first the other reason for watching that one first is because actor dilip kumar is someone who is extremely famous among hindi cinema fans and is also called the tragedic king and tragedy is one of the main themes of devdas devdas 55 which like many older hindi films is available on youtube to watch for free was directed by bimal roy who was a prominent filmmaker in hindi film industry and was active from the year 1934 to the year 1967 Devdas 55 stars Suchitra Sen in the role of Paro as her film debut the role which was offered to Meena Kumari first who didn't end up playing it because her husband put some conditions that Bimal Roy the director didn't agree to the film also stars Vijayanti Mala in the role of Chandramukhi which was also first offered to Nargis Bina Rai and Suraya all of whom refused as they all wanted to play Paro which was already given to Suchitra Sen when i started watching Devdas 55 on youtube i was trying to read the opening credits but couldn't do it then i noticed that the publisher has cropped the original film to change its original 4 is to 3 academy ratio into 16 by 9 and if you don't know i absolutely hate that cropping films into your desired aspect ratio is disrespectful to the makers and to the film itself you can't handle the black bars on the sides and the top of the film don't watch it and don't fucking disrespect the film's soul by making changes to it to satisfy your entitled and spoiled being i obviously logged and found an upload where the film was in its original form and watched that one the first thing you will notice that it is fucking long it is 2 hours and 48 minutes long and yes as you'd expect from a 1955 film it is slow it is pretty slow and i absolutely most certainly know that many of you already decided not to watch devda 55 but let me tell you that every single second of those 168 minutes is worth it the timeless acting by tragedy king dilip kumar the nerve wracking and absolutely mesmerizing music by sd burman the eternal surge of self reflection emitted by the songs like kisko khabar thi by dilip kumar ab aage teri marzi jise tu qubool kar le and specially manzil ki chaah mein and unnecessary to the plot songs that are so good that you can't skip them like aan milo and sajan ki ho gayi kori the surreal realism of the tone and the dialogues the theatricality of the plot the extremely well crafted balance in the character motivations of theatrics and realism and the masterful way the three main characters are handled that you support and understand even the ego and impulse driven decisions that all the characters make is just worth every penny that you actually don't have to spend to watch this film Bimal Roy's Devdas continues to be the definitive Hindi incarnation of Devdas on the silver screen. The iconic dialogues that everybody knows of has become an integral but latent part of Hindi film's legacy. The 1955's gem that has made the character of Devdas into an adjective in the Indian culture throughout languages is not so popular now. People know the dialogues, they know the scene. When I reached that scene, I recognized it immediately and it felt like I have always known this character, like I have always known this story. I found the origin of that adjective I used my whole life to describe a melancholic person. I experienced the origin of something that I always knew of. And the experience was a uh, very Devdas-esque. 
After and during the amazing experience of Dilip Kumar's Devdas, I was thinking about how 2002's Devdas would compare to it. And let me tell you, I wasn't welcomed with the image I had of it in mind. And that's not a good thing. So when I started watching Devdas O2, I discovered something about it. And let me describe you my discovery by not actually telling you directly. So let me tell you my theory that how Sanjay Leela Bansali came to make Devdas. So my theory is that one day, Sanjay Leela Bansali was sitting on his ass in his house, watching TV and mistakenly he tuned into Star Plus or maybe he has always been a huge Star Plus fan and he saw Star Plus and got inspired by it. He was so inspired that he wanted to make his own version of Star Plus into a film. He somehow got to know about Devdas so he decided to make a Star Plus edition of a Devdas adaptation and this is exactly what the film called Devdas directed by Sanjil Lapansali is. An elaborate and expensive Star Plus Maha episode with some extremely accomplished actors of the Hindi film industry at the time like Shah Rukh Khan, Ashwarya Rai and Madhuri Dikshit along with so many talented actors in supporting roles. And if you don't know, Star Plus is an Indian TV channel and the shows that air on it and on all the other Indian TV channels in the entertainment section are the worst possible kind of entertainment you can get. There is no story, just tropes and half dimensional characters. No comedy, just sound effects. No real emotional depth, just cheap drama generated using unnecessary characters that utter bull crap faster than how long an average Indian man lasts in bed. No offense. None taken. The production design cost money, but I don't know what for. The actors act, but I just happen to not able to find when or where. And my poop has more dimension than the dialogues, blocking, writing and the camera work combined. And most of these things apply to Devdas too. The sound effects guy was on cocaine. The dialogue writer binged Saaz Bhi Kabhi Bahuti and Ye Rishta Kya Kehlata Hai in one night with the screenplay writer while they were huffing plastic fumes from their plastic sets. Sorry, plastic film sets or film sets. The words are interchangeable. The production designers were on a vacation and the plastic guy was working over time because the production design has nothing more than just plasticiness. That is, in fact, very true to its inspiration. Stopless. The only sober or should I say decently functional people were the actors and the music people because the only three things that are mind-blowingly good in this film is the acting, the iconic music and some dialogues that does contribute to the utter beauty and the grandiose theatricality of some parts of the film. Because I guess while the other people were enjoying Karthik and Naira's chemistry and the plastic fumes, the dialogue guy must have passed out. And during his work hours, he maybe was way more functional than a lot more people. And yes, don't forget the technical crew that was present during the shoot. Who invites the technical crew in plastic huffing parties after all? Also in Devdas 55, the film is set in the same year that is 1955 and everything is very realistic. But here, technically the film is set before independence but like its inspiration, nothing in the film feels like any time period anywhere ever that actually existed. The film is unbearably starplessy in the beginning. The sound effects are overused and are cringe. The production design is too plasticky. Unnecessary and cheap drama is generated through characters that just existed in the actual story but were not actually participative and should not be. The film is beautiful. Some scenes are iconic and are actually good. The film is famous and is THE Devdas for many people. That absolutely don't include me and if you're watching this, shouldn't include you either. After the horrible sweet experience of Sanjay Leela Bansali's Devdas, a filmmaker that has since mastered the craft of showing grandiosity on screen, I turned to Dev D to give me my sanity back. Dev D, which is currently available on Netflix to stream, is directed by Anurag Kashyap and is a modern and time appropriately realistic take on the story of Devdas. The film is released and set in 2009. The film has all the primary characters of the Devdas story. Along with necessary primary characters, Dev D also has realism, horny Devdas, Paro and Chandramukhi, some really nice visual storytelling, a fair share of comedy, a huge amount of enjoyability, too many songs with the same people appearing in the frame, interesting and character developing backstories, an extremely satisfying modern take on the premise of Devdas and good acting of course. Devdi impressed me hugely. I enjoyed it thoroughly. The film to me is equivalent to 1955's Devdas. That film also has its fair share of demerits, all of whom together makes it unpreferred by the general audience of today. And 2002's Devdas is no solution for that whatsoever. Instead, for the people who refuse to watch 1955, Devdas, Dev D is a much more suitable option to watch. It is fun, it's horny, it's trippy and has enough amount of satisfaction. 
After Dev D, I watched 1936's Devdas, which is also available on YouTube to watch for free. 1936's Devdas is directed by Pramitesh Barua, who was a writer, director, and actor in the pre-independence India. Pramitesh Barua adapted Devdas in three languages, and no, he didn't dub his movies. He made Devdas three times in three different languages with different set of actors and crew and all that thing. The first one was in Bengali in 1935, which allegedly garnered huge praises by the audience and. And Sharad Chandra Chattopadhyay himself in the Bengali version, Pramitesh himself played Devdas, and the film is now in the category of partially lost. In 1936, he adapted Devdas into a Hindi film, and in 1937, into an Assamese film. The 1936's Devdas stars K L Sehgal in the role of Devdas, who was an actor and singer in the Indian film industry pre-independence. The film also stars Jamuna Barua in the role of Paru, who also was an actress active during the same time period, and was married to. Director Pramitesh Barua, who in this film plays the role of Paro's stepson. In the role of Chandan Mukhi, this film stars actress Raj Kumari, who apparently doesn't even have a Wikipedia page. Earlier, when I mentioned that 1936's Devdas didn't give me a great impression, what I meant was that when I was trying to find the best upload of it on YouTube, I saw that the acting in Devdas 1936 is so flat. Hence, I watched Devdas 55 first. And this one at the very last. So last night I saw Devdas 1936, and the first thing that I noticed was the film's length. That is two hours and eleven minutes. And I said to myself, let's see how this film from 1936 tells the same story in significantly less time than others. And to be honest, the film does do some nice things to keep the film moving and tell the story in less time. So many plot points are told to us rather than being shown to us, and this technique could have worked if the intimate slow integral and really emotionally deep moments were done well but the thing is that this film is a piece of ancient firewood it wasn't that precious then and most certainly is it now the acting is so flat that a piece of paper kept between two planks for 100 years will have more depth and curvature to it and let me remind you that the actors are actually good actors i myself suspected that maybe it was the actors fault but when i watched some clips from the other films of the same actor there they did a pretty good job they talk like humans and they have expressive faces like generally humans do i have no idea why the acting in a film called devdas released in 1936 which stars india's first ever superstar was so flat and the female actors were even flatter the lifeless faces that imitated the human silhouette just utter really bad and even flatter dialogues in the important scenes of conversations and throughout the film act Actors never look into the camera. They never look into each other's eyes. They just keep looking diagonally into nothingness. And as I told you, many details are told instead of being shown. Unlike Bimal Roy's Devda, this one doesn't take time to show the childhood part of Devda and Paro. Instead, it alters the story and few characters to suit its narrative. They made Chunni Lal into an exploiter and a manipulative mofo. They made Devdas into a loser man-child. Chandramukhi is now more lifeless than any character. in even a real star plus show the songs are good but the number of good songs among this vast number of songs that this film has doesn't compensate for the flat acting the only interesting thing about this film is something that i noticed in the opening credits i noticed that the cinematographer of this film is bimal roy the same bimal roy who in 1955 made his own devdas and some scenes in bimal roy's devdas are identical to those of this film with better acting of course fanboying over bimal roy's devdas aside after watching both devdas i can say for sure that bimal roy's devdas capture the soul of devdas story perfectly and transfer its essence to the audience perfectly too in the process it uses some absolutely unnecessary songs and takes a significantly long time which is absolutely worth it so at the end i would like to say that the story of devdas is of ego impulsiveness melancholy love and tragedy the idea behind this video was to give myself an excuse to watch four films three of which i had never seen before the comparison thing came later but this experience of watching the same story told in different different eras in different ways by different artists with very different visions made me really happy and validated my love and wonder that i have for cinema so let's do a ranking of all four devdas hindi adaptations i talked about today on the last place comes the flattest film i have ever seen devdas 36 
The film is old and that doesn't give it a pass for emotionless acting. On the third place comes Sanjeela Bansali's Devdas, released in 2002. The film is beautiful at places, the dialogues and the music is iconic, but after all it remains to be a well-produced topless episode and uses cheap drama. In the second place comes Dev D. As I told you, it is amazing and perfectly adapts the Devdas story in the current era. In the first place obviously comes Bimal Roy's imperfect masterpiece called Devdas. The film is beautiful and is amazing to experience. It gives the audience a lens to understand the Devda story. The Devda story for many is regressive, misogynist, sexist and toxic. And it is not exactly true but not totally untrue either. I personally agree with the first and the last remark myself. While the regressiveness is obvious and natural for the time period the film is set in and the toxicity is something we need to chat about in another video about toxic men in Indian storytelling. With that, I sign off and one last time recommend you to watch the top two position holders of Devdas adaptation. Dev D and Devdas 55 are two of the best films I have ever seen. Devdas 55 is you know theatrical. It has that grandiosity and that extreme realism that is Bimal Roy's you know filmography. His films are very realistic like ultra realistic. Dev D on the other hand is a joyride to say the least while getting the Devdas story in the modern era.